Apple and Microsoft used to have a better rivalry, with Steve Jobs even going as far as to say that all Microsoft did was shamelessly rip off other people's ideas. Despite this tense rivalry between the two companies, it comes as a shock that Microsoft actually saved them from collapsing. How it happened? Well, do I have a story to tell you? This was one of the biggest things that happened in the technology and business world. To understand how Apple got in this position, we need to go back. Steve Jobs was born in, wait, not that back, a little closer. In 1985, Steve Jobs hired John Scully, who worked in Pepsi as the new Apple CEO. Jobs and Scully didn't get along. Scully managed to get Steve Jobs fired. Then John Scully became the president of Apple. Now after that, Apple had many ups and downs and changed few CEOs until 1997, when it was really, really bad. See, at that time, Apple was a different company. They weren't selling iPhones, AirPods, and that stuff. They just sold computers. Operating system business was huge. I mean, every computer needs an operating system. Apple had one, but they refused to license it to other companies. On the other hand, Microsoft, who had Windows, didn't have that problem. They licensed it and owned over 90% of the market and were in high demand, which made Apple lose billions. Not only that, the year before, in 1996, they lost over $700 million. Now, what was Steve Jobs doing after getting kicked out from the company he started? Nothing much, really. He started a few companies. One is named Pixar. I don't believe you've heard about them. They make movies. And he started Next, a company that produced really, really expensive computers. Apple needed Steve back, but he didn't want to get back. I mean, the guys kicked him out. But he said it's because he had more time to spend with his family. Eventually, he changed his mind. Apple acquired Next, and the operating system made by Next became the foundation for the next generation of Mac OS. Steve didn't want to be CEO or anything. He went with an advisor position. For next, he got 1.5 million shares in the company he started, but he didn't get cash. Still, not everything was good immediately after Steve Jobs returned. Apple was in trouble with developers, investors, and product lines. Investors were afraid. They sold the shares and new investors didn't want to buy the shares because the company was failing. Steve Jobs said that Apple had less than 90 days worth of cash in the bank. At that time, Apple was worth $3 billion. It was near the end. Then, the same year, in August, an announcement was made. Microsoft is making an investment in Apple. Microsoft is buying $150 million worth of Apple stock at market price. Apple got $150 million from Microsoft. People were shocked. They made a partnership with their biggest enemy. I mean, partnering up with the guy who made you out of business is weird. People were more shocked when they announced this. Next, we have taken a look uh, at browsers out there and Apple has decided. <laughs> Apple has decided. To it was basically like surrendering, but those 150 million weren't a donation. Microsoft bought 150 million worth of shares, non-voting at that time's market price. The money strengthened the company and reduced the risk of bankruptcy. They even made a five-year deal to put Microsoft Office on Apple computers, even if the shares were non-voting. As I said, this wasn't a donation. Bill Gates didn't do this because of kindness. Firstly, he could capitalize in the potential recovery of Apple. Bill also had a negative reputation. Back then, he didn't do philanthropy. I mean, he still has a negative reputation, but at that time, he was battling with the country. Microsoft was so good that it got attention from the antitrust regulators. They prepared the case from 1993. If Microsoft lost, it would probably be split in separate companies. The same happened with Rockefeller's Standard Oil. We made a video about that. Check it out after this video. So the best way to make that not happen is to push up their competitors. Bill Gates had a hearing in 1998. A few years later, in 2001, the antitrust guys gave up. They left Microsoft with minimal punishment. Microsoft was not a monopoly. After everything cooled down in 2003, Bill Gates sold the shares in Apple. Keep in mind, that was after the dot-com bubble crash, so the shares were not worth so much. But if Bill Gates kept the shares, he would have over $280 million. But that's pocket change for Bill Gates. He maybe missed on so much money, 
but at least his company didn't get split up and he wasn't charged for a monopoly. After the investments, Apple launched the famous Think Different campaign. That campaign wasn't focused on the products. It was focused on the brand image. It showed what creative people could do with the help of computers. The ads showed creative people taking risk, get up from failure, acting different from the crowd, and it was massively successful. And now this story is told by the media to the public. The real story is much deeper. Apple made a software named QuickTime. It was a multimedia player. Microsoft partnered up with Intel and stole the code for QuickTime for the software video for Windows. Apple got angry, of course, and there were two options to settle this. One is court, and the second one is to resolve this privately. You wouldn't believe it, but Apple chose the second option. But Microsoft and Intel refused, so Apple went to court. Now here is where 150 million investment from Microsoft comes. It was over the patent dispute. They managed to solve it privately, but for a small fee of 150 million dollars. Apple's CFO at that time, Fred Anderson, confirmed this. Even Steve Jobs confirmed it. Uh, because there were some uh, patent disputes. And uh, rather than... Uh... So the money wasn't to prove that Microsoft is not a monopoly. Look, Apple had nothing to do with the antitrust case. The case was about Internet Explorer and Windows. Because Internet Explorer came with Windows and couldn't be easily uninstalled which made the antitrust guys think that it's a product combination. Internet Explorer is in the browser market and Windows is in the OS market and both hold most of the market share. Combining the products together, it will just grow the market share. I mean, at that time, the only competitor for Windows Explorer was Netscape Navigator that wasn't free. Even the deal with Apple that Internet Explorer was the main browser on Apple computers made Internet Explorer owning more market share. Look at this. Why giving a smaller company money to prove that you're not a monopoly makes sense. Apple wasn't saved by Microsoft. They were still worth billions. Jobs said that Apple was 90 days until bankruptcy. That was right, but he meant about the business plan. Apple saved new leadership, new business strategy and new products. Not Bill Gates and Microsoft. It was just a deal for stealing code. I have seen on various sources that said if they went to court, the settlement could be $500 million to more than $1 billion. So better $150 million than $1 billion. Look, neither company lost. The world changed in many ways. A little company named Google was founded a few years later. And you know who owns the search and browser market. And maybe without these investments, we wouldn't have, as people call it, eye revolution because Apple used that 150 million for good investment. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you are interested in business content and business stories.